Hey there, I'm Source Make, and today I'm going to teach you about multi-threading and we're going to go through a very simple C++ multi-threading program. So as usual, I've got my website open and it has all the details on multi-threading if you'd like to read about it. Below this video is going to be a link to this website and it's going to have all the resources that you would need on multi-threading. So I feel free to click on it. And you can also click on the subscribe button below this video if you'd like that because my YouTube channel will always have cool content on it. So what is multi-threading? To put it simply because it's a really simple concept, your CPU can handle multiple things at the same time. So when it comes to programming, instead of doing things sequentially like do this one thing, then when that ends, do something else, then when that ends, do another thing. Instead of doing things procedurally, you can say, okay, I've got this one thing to do, let me spin that off on a thread. Okay, what's next on the list? Okay, this, okay, we can spin that off on another thread. Then you continue and continue, and basically, as many threads as your CPU can handle, as your CPU has available to it, you can keep using additional threads to make your programs go faster. Basically, it it lets you do it lets you handle things simultaneously. So so the way you would use multi-threading, like the reason you would use it, is let's say you have an application and it has a user interface, something that the user has to click on, but it also has like something that needs deep computation, like maybe it needs to access something from a database and that takes a while, and you know you don't want to do things on the same thread because if you did everything that way then your user interface would freeze up any time that your computation accessing the database would happen because you only have so many resources at once and that would mean the user can't click on something else at the same time because your computer can only do one thing at once your computer can do multiple things but your program can't so that's where multi-threading comes in like that's the prominent examples and also basically for a lot of computations I if you want to like get the most out of your computer, your CPU, especially like with upcoming video games, you can distribute the work onto multiple threads so that it happens simultaneously and you don't need to do everything at once. Many hands make light work, that's the best way to describe it. So if that description wasn't appealing to you, then go to the website and you can read more about it. With that said, we are going to actually do a C++ example with multi-threading. Really simple, just to see how it happens, to see what it's like. So I set this up. Normally, I don't. I, I would want to walk you through this together, like we, we would type it out together, but it, it took too long. And this is like a really simple topic. So let's just go through it. I've got this here. Let me make it pretty big. And I'm going to go through what everything does with you right here. It's, again, I can't say how simple it is. It's super simple. So, copyright, compile, you com you compile it with this, and I'll show you in a bit. So, include IO stream, basic stuff, you know, you need that for C out. Include thread. Thread is for the multi-threading object that we're going to be using later. Include chrono. Chrono is basically a time the library that's going to handle our time management because we're, what this program is going to do is it's going to do things the normal sequential way it's going to measure how fast that takes how long that takes and then it's going to do it the multi-threaded way and it's going to measure how long that takes and we're going to compare it to see the normal way compared to the multi-threaded way and using namespace scd that is standard stuff so we've got this function and this is going to be our, our favorite function for this program it's called kill time just chill, kill some time. So it's gonna get past a loop count, and it's gonna do a while loop, just just for until until this number reaches zero. So let's say loop count is three, then three is greater than zero, subtract one from it, and now loop count is two. Two is greater than zero, subtract one from it, it becomes one. One is greater than zero, subtract one from it, it becomes zero, and that's it for the while loop. So basically, you pass a number to it, and it's gonna kill time. Literally, just kill time. So, then, now that we know what that is, let's go down to main where our program starts. Because whenever you see a program, you should start at main. So, see out program started. It's going to say that the program started. And then it's going to define our loop count to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. That's just the arbitrary number we choose to use for our loop count. And that loop count is going to be used that number is going to be used over here. So basically this number is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Not 10, 0. And yeah. 
So the first way, this normal way we're gonna do it is just do just do each kill time is what I wanted to say. Just do each kill time the normal sequential way. And auto start is gonna start a timer for our chrono library. Then we're gonna do normal way the function, which I'll explain in a bit. It's gonna stop the timer and it's gonna output what the time was in milliseconds. So simple. This is timer, timer, timer stuff. That's it. It's just gonna measure the normal way. So let's look at what normal way is. Normal way is going to call kill time three times. Simple. Kill time, just waste some time. We're gonna do it sequentially three times. So what this does is it's gonna call kill time for the loop count. Wait till that ends. Then call t kill time again for the loop count. Wait till that ends. Then call kill time and wait for it to end. And we're gonna measure how long that takes with these numbers. Then we're gonna do this the multi-threaded way. So again, start and see out is the exact same here. We're just gonna start a timer and it then measure the difference in these and report that as the time it took. And it, for the time that it's actually taking is multi-threaded way the function. But before we look at it, we're gonna see that the program ends and returns zero. So we know what's going on. And the multi-threaded way, this is where the magic happens. So this is how you would do it. Call, call kill, time, kill time three times the multi-threaded way. So it gets past loop count, and we've got this thing called thread t1, and we're going to pass it kill time and a loop count. So this is what it says. This line actually means execute the kill time function and pass it the parameter loop count onto a thread object that we call t1. So a thread object named T1 is going to execute kill time and it's going to pass loop count to kill time. Simple. Simple enough, right? That makes sense. Start a thread for kill time for the loop count. So, so the way multi-threaded way is going to get called and then it's going to see this. It's going to create a new thread called T1 and it's going to say, okay, I want you to do kill time and pass it off on some thread. And then it's going to see t another line like this say okay go ahead do kill time one more time and we're going to do that on a thread called t2 and then one more time next line is going to say okay do kill time one more time and we're going to do that on a thread that we named t3 and then it's, once it sees this line it's just going to do it spin it off on another thread and then it's going to execute this line the difference is this line is going to execute and then when it's done it's going to go to this line this line is going to execute, but what it does is instead of, instead of running kill time and waiting for kill time to end, it runs kill time on a separate thread, and whenever that thread ends, you know, it, it doesn't matter. That's on a separate thread. We, we're already on this one basically immediately. So we're going to do these basically kill times basically simultaneously because we're running three separate threads on them. And then down here, we're going to actually wait for the the threads to join. So so this T1 that joins is gonna say, okay, remember that thread object named T1? Before our main program continues finishing, before I go to the next line in our code, I'm gonna wait for T1 to finish. And it's gonna do the same thing for T2. It's gonna say, okay, let me wait for T2 to finish executing. And when it does finish executing, that's when I'll go to the next line of code and execute it. So then T2 finishes, then we wait for T3. T3 could have even finished first. Who knows with these threads? But that's just the way it works. So so we understand how everything works. Multi-threaded way is going to spin off a separate thread for T1, spin off a separate thread that executes kill time for T2 and, and for T3. Then it's going to wait for the three of them to finish. And then that's it. And our main program is basically going to do the normal way, sequentially, the multi-threaded way, and it's going to tell us the time it takes to do all that. So that was a lot of explaining. Let me open a command window for Windows. I'm going to say bash to make this basically a Linux and Ubuntu command line. So if you don't know what that is, on Windows 10 you can basically use Linux commands by saying bash. And if you don't know how to do that, go to the website and I'll have a resource on that to teach you how to do that. So we're going to compile it. I had the compile line right up here. G++, our file name main.cpp. 
we're going to say that the std should be C++11. We're going to include the pthread library as a flag here, slash o for the object file, and then we're going to say run. And you see this created a file called run, and this run is basically a Linux file. That's why it's just a file and it's not like a .exe or anything like that. So we're going to say dot slash run, and it's going to run. And our program starts. We expect that from the main thread, from the main, um, not thread, the main says it right here. So doing it the normal way took 7.8 seconds and doing it the multi-threaded way took 2.6 seconds. And does that make sense? Well, let's say each of these kill times takes 2.5 seconds and then there's a little bit of overhead. So that means the multi-threaded way, 2.5 seconds happens. Well, well, let's start with the normal way. The normal way, 2.5 seconds happens, that first kill time ends, another 2.5 seconds happens for this one, so that's five seconds total. Then we move to this line, and the final 2.5 seconds ends. And that's like 7.5 seconds, and you add in the overhead, and that's like 7.8 seconds total. So it happens sequentially. The multi-threaded way, um, kill time happens, a little bit of overhead, but the code doesn't wait. Like, the, the thread's off, and, and who cares? The 2.5 seconds happens, but before anything continues, we already start with our second thread, so, so like, T1 will happen, spin it off on a separate thread, but then we already start T2, and then a little time passes, then we start three, T3, and by the time they all finish, like, their 2.5 seconds for each of these kill times, you know, it, it happens simultaneously, so it, it finishes basically at the same time. So that's how you use multi-threading in C++. It's a really simple example, because it's really simple. Uh, C++ makes it really simple. I showed you how to do it. You just do this thread and, you know, you can boost your program's performances a lot of times because sometimes they'll be like, maybe your algorithm's not especially efficient, so to make the most, to, to save time, you'll make the most out of your CPU by multi-threading, even if, you know, even if it doesn't like, e even if you're not making an application that needs separate multi-threads, if, if you want to like, make your compute time faster, you can use multi-threading. And that's basically how you do it. But on the website, I mentioned a warning because, you know, you need to take some precautions when using this. And it's not like, oh, this I'm, I'm just saying stuff. Like, if you don't do it the right way, then you'll get errors in your program because there, there are some things like not sharing variables between threads, ensuring that the threads are disposed of, like, like what would happen if we didn't use this t1.join, then our program would crash because our main program would finish, but t1 didn't finish, and the compiler or the program wouldn't like that, a and stuff like that. So I'm going to be doing another video and another article explaining these in-depth how to use multi-threads how to use threads in C++ and how to like the best practices so keep an eye on this website and look maybe over here maybe it's already done by the time you're watching this video but if not look below this video and there will be a link if there's another part two of this to explain how everything works so that's multi-threading if you like this video subscribe visit the website do all that good stuff thanks for watching I'm SourceMake